Welcome back to Power Lunch. We're broadcasting live from the World Economic Forum, the 23rd edition of the Africa franchise, if you like. In the studio with me now from the WEF is the chief economist, and that's Jennifer Blank. Jennifer, welcome to the program. Welcome to Cape Town. I know you're based in Geneva. What does a chief economist do at an organization like the WEF? Well, I think the main thing that the forum is doing in the area of uh, economics is really competitiveness analysis. And so really looking at what it is that countries need to do in order to be more productive and to provide high and rising living, living standards for their citizens. Yeah, in fact, I was speaking to somebody from, um, where is it, Ernst & Young yesterday about the Africa Attractiveness Survey, mm -hmm. and one of, the th one of the challenges, right at the top of their challenges list is the following, strengthen competitiveness in Africa. Yes. How far are we behind our, our emerging market peers? Well, I think there's two ways of looking at this. First of all, you can look at the gaps vis-a-vis -vis other emerging markets, uh, and there we are seeing big gaps, particularly in areas like infrastructure, governance and in institutions, education. Um, there's catch-up uh, taking place, especially in areas like education, uh, but still some uh, needs to be achieved. However, there's also an interesting gap between the best performers in Africa and those that are performing the least well, uh, and it probably won't surprise you to know that South Africa uh, is the most competitive uh, of African countries in the top half of the rankings. But if you look at the bottom 20, uh, actually there's 14 out of 20 that are made up by African economies. Competitive in what sense? Define competitiveness. Okay, so when we think about competitiveness, we're looking at the extent to which countries have put into place all the factors, policies, institutions that make them productive. Uh, in other words, you know, those things that are basically ensuring that prosperity can be earned on a sustainable basis, not because of rising uh, commodity prices. So we look at things from the more basic to the more complex, uh, things like education, infrastructure, health, uh, governance, as I said, macroeconomic environment, but also the functioning of markets, goods, uh, financial and labor markets, and of course technological adoption, innovation, and those sorts of more complex things. So South Africa at the top, who's at the bottom? Who needs to play catch-up? Well, I mean, it's a lot of the, the less advanced economies, so Burkina Faso really rounds out the rankings, for example. A number of the Francophone economies are also at the bottom. Uh, and those are countries really, I mean, again, we are seeing some improvements, but a lot needs to be achieved, uh, particularly in terms of at least providing basic uh, uh, you know, resources, uh, basic uh, services uh, in terms of education. Uh, one of the things really that we're looking at in Africa in general is the fact that you're having about 10 million uh, new entrants into the workforce every year. Now that's a great opportunity. Uh, you have this youth bulge coming up, but if you don't have the sorts of, you know, jobs that are waiting for them and if they're not prepared to take them, then this can actually end up being a hindrance rather than a help. Exactly. I mean, the youth bulge is, is a double-edged sword, of course, because if we don't create jobs for the uh, for our, our, our fantastic demographics, then, of course, and there's going to be discontent. And I'm not suggesting there might be an Arab Spring, but the, it certainly could scupper the, the nascent recovery. Precisely. I mean, the last thing we want is growth without jobs. Uh, and unfortunately, I mean, well, unfortunately, we've been seeing over the past 10 to 15 years that there has been quite impressive growth in Africa. It has not yet been translating into those sorts of improvements in, in livelihoods uh, that one would hope. But here at, at in Cape Town and at this meeting, we're really talking about the positive outlook. And it does seem that if, some, you know, Things are changing, things are improving, uh, and if now the right kinds of incentives are put into place and if the right kinds of investments are made, a lot could be achieved in the next 10 years. Let's not forget that if you look at South Korea, just three decades ago, it had the same GDP per capita as Ghana, and today it's one of the most advanced economies in the world. Are you suggesting that we could replicate that sort of uh, business model, the South Korean model? Well, I mean, I think we could certainly uh, look to the East Asian tigers and, and learn a lot from them, and a lot of it had to do with opening. Perhaps one of the things that they've done that the African countries haven't done yet is really look at how they can spur inter-African trade. Uh, trade remains very low uh, in Africa and also in, in low value-added goods, uh, and these are small economies, same as a lot of the, of the Asian tigers had to contend with at the time. Uh, and so certainly if you look at what they did in terms of opening up and then looking outwards, uh, a lot really could be achieved. I'm not saying they could follow uh, you know, um, South Korea uh, like this, but if, if some things were done, really uh, a lot could be achieved in a short period of time. We've got to un unlock Africa's talent. That's another thing that the WEF talks about on, the, on its website. I and mean, that's incredibly important. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that there's a lot of, there's so many skills out there. You see them just walk around uh, Cape Town talking to people. You see that there's mm -hmm. so much enthusiasm and so much potential talent. But unfortunately, uh, in certain cases, we've been underachievers in that regard. Well, indeed, I think a big focus has been on getting kids into school. Mm -hmm. And you can la look at Latin America for a similar example. Uh, Latin America has been great about getting a lot of children into school recently. But 
But now, you know, a lot of the emerging markets are having to now say, okay, great, kids are in school, what are they actually learning there? Uh, and that's why you're seeing a bit of a skills gap right now. In fact, if you look at South Africa, uh, while you do have a high unemployment rate, at the same time, a lot of the time companies will say, well, we can't get the, the actual people that we need uh, for the types of jobs. Mm. And so a big focus needs to be on this. And I would say, uh, if you look at, at some of the successful countries around the world, one of the big things that can help is making sure that you bring business into the discussion with governments. Really put together, I'm not saying necessarily a you know, public-private uh, partnership, but at least dialogue about what it is uh, that is needed uh, in, uh, in the economy by the private sector to make sure that they're getting the sorts of skilled people that they need. What are you going to do as chief economist over the next three days? It's day one now and I can already feel the atmosphere building up a little bit. Are you going to stand at a podium and just talk exactly uh, as you've, you're speaking to me now? Is there a deeper meaning to this? Absolutely not. I think that the, the real importance uh, of this meeting is the fact that we're bringing together business, government, civil society voices, uh, people who can really make a difference. This is a meeting of leaders and this is a propitious moment really for Africa when decisions made today can make a big difference tomorrow. Yeah. One of the big things that we're doing uh, uh, right now is is that we're actually going to launch uh, the Africa Competitiveness Report uh, tomorrow together with the World Bank and the African Development Bank. It's not the point of coming out with another report, but really it's about the three of us getting together, three organizations uh, that really want to make sure that we have a joint message in terms of the things, the challenges facing Africa and the things that can be done in order to really boost growth uh, and provide those sorts of rising living standards for Africans. Just very quickly, last 30 seconds, Jennifer. It's not a full start this time, is it, for Africa? It's gonna, we're going to follow through and build on this, aren't we? I think that there's a lot of optimism this time. It really does feel like things are changing. We're seeing governance improvements, you know, peaceful transitions of power, uh, a lot of incredible uh, energy right now in Africa. Uh, I've been coming down here for 15 years. I know that we were talking about the African Renaissance a decade ago. Mm. Honestly, it feels like something's really happening this Let's time. Let's leave it on that very optimistic yes. note. Thank you very much Wonderful. for your time. That's Thank Jennifer you. Blank, who's the Chief Economist at the World Economic Forum.